Greetings and welcome once again in our Bible study. Today we are moving on on the discussion of the benefits of the Ascension. And we want to look at Christ himself. When he ascended into heaven, what happened? And what then we shall see later on, what do we gain from that? Because as we said in our last lesson, some of us are still crying. We wish that Jesus was here physically to walk with us. And since he is not here, then we are crying that Jesus should come back. And since he has not come back the way we expect, then we have turned to preoccupy ourselves with the things of the world. But brothers and sisters, this is very dangerous. If you remember Jesus talking about a man going on a trip and leaving his servants in charge of his house, this is dangerous when you think that Jesus has, is delaying his coming and we turn to the things of the world. And we, we, we are using the name of Jesus Christ just as a rubber stamp to our own things and to our own words and to our own thoughts. Let's turn to the book of Psalms. Psalm 16, verse 9 to 11. But I would like you to put your eyes on verse 10. And it says, Therefore, my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiced. My flesh also will rest in hope. Verse 10, for you will not leave my soul in shield, nor will you allow your Holy One, your Holy One, to see corruption. Verse 11, you will show me the path of life in your presence is the fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Not only in your presence, but also on your right hand, because we will come to that. Now, go with me to the book of Acts chapter 2. We are beginning to read from verse 22. This will be rather a lengthy reading, but bear with me because I want us to get the meaning of what is said. Verse 22, it says, Now, this is Peter addressing the multitude or the gathering on the day of Pentecost. He says, Men of Israel, Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. Verse 23, him being delivered by the determined purpose and the foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless, by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death. Verse 24, whom God 
raised the app, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David says concerning him. Now remember where we read from Psalm 16, verse 9, 10, and 11. Now Peter is quoting David, and he says, David says concerning him. Now that is concerning Jesus Christ. I foresaw the Lord always before my eye, before my face. For he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoiced, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Listen to verse 29. Men and brethren, let me speak freely. Another translation will say, let me speak boldly. To you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried. Get that clearly. He is both dead and buried. And his tomb is with us to this day. Verse 30, Therefore, being a prophet, David, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in the Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. Verse 32. This Jesus, and the notice, Peter does not say that in Jesus. It is this Jesus. He is present with us. This Jesus, God, has raised up of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exhorted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. Remember our last lesson we spoke about the promise of the Father. Now, here Peter is telling you this promise could not have come. Jesus had to go back there and receive the promise from the Father so that he can pour it out to the church. Let's go back and try to see what is happening here. This is only 50 days after the resurrection. After
after the Passover. Then came the day of Pentecost. And the 120 disciples, with the 12 apostles included, were gathered together in one place. Remember, if Jesus appeared to his disciples for a period of 40 days, and may I clarify this, in these 40 days, Jesus did not permanently stay with his disciples as he used to stay with them while on the in the flesh. This is a different Jesus. He's a Jesus raised or risen from the dead. So he came and went. Where? We don't know. But, most logically, it can only be that Jesus was moving between heaven and the earth for 40 days to the disciples, then, then back to heaven, probably to spend the night there. Who knows? Because here on the earth, a risen Christ could not found a bed to sleep. So he had to go back to heaven. This is understandable. Okay? Now, after 40 days, he went back to heaven. Now he ascended officially and formally. He says he said goodbye to his disciples and he ascended officially. And a cloud received him. When you read in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verse 19, it will, Mark will say very clearly he was received in heaven and he sat on the right hand of God. Here, Luke in the book of Acts, chapter 1, said, verse 9, he was received in heaven by the cloud. He says the same thing. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse, verse 51, he was taken back to heaven. Now, after he has gone there, it took only 10 days. Remember, verse 5 of Acts, chapter 1, Jesus had told his disciples, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit, or with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. Counting from Passover, it was to go to 50 days. Then comes the day of Pentecost. So, the disciples waited in Jerusalem for 10 days. And the day of Pentecost came. You are told that there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were. The, the sound did not go to the crowd. But just, just, just be patient with me because I like looking at this. You know, the priests are in the temple receiving the sheaves. They are receiving the, the harvest, the first harvest, and they are offering sacrifices on the altar. The band offering has been offered in the morning. They are offering, you know, the thanksgiving, uh, offering of peace offering, and a fellowship offering, and they were very busy. And the crowd was there for worship in Jerusalem. But in nearby, a place, in a place called the Upper Room, there the disciples of Jesus were gathering. And the Holy Spirit, that mighty sound from heaven, did not go to the temple. 
I hope you noted the fact also that after the resurrection, Jesus never went to the temple. As a matter of fact, after Matthew chapter 24, when you are told Jesus went out and departed from the temple, Jesus never went back to the temple again. But the disciples went back and the sound of the Holy Spirit came to where they were gathered. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us not go into details about this. We'll come, that, we'll come back to that later on. But when this sound occurred, the multitude, the multitude left the temple. The priests were left with their sacrifices there and with their, whatever they were receiving from the people. And the people rushed to see what was this and what was happening. When they came and they gathered there, Peter, along with the other apostles and the disciples, went out to speak to them. And Peter stood up and quieted people and requested them to listen to him now. One of the benefits of the ascension of Jesus Christ is the coming of the Holy Spirit upon our lives. And when the Holy Spirit comes, then what happens? See, Peter, a man who 50 days ago was confronted by a maid, a house girl, concerning Jesus, and he denied Jesus openly, said, I don't know what you are talking about, I don't know the man. But this coward Peter denied Jesus three times, then he walked out, went there and wept bitterly by himself. But this coward, coward Peter, after he has received the Holy Spirit, he is now bold enough to face multitude of people on the day of Pentecost. Why? Because this is a different Peter. It's not the Peter you knew. Praise the name of the Lord. When this happens, Samuel told Saul, son of Kish, the Holy Spirit of God will come upon you and you will be turned into a different man. When the Holy Spirit comes, turns you to a different man, turns you to a different woman, you turn from where? You have been. You turn from foolishness and you become wise. You turn from cowardice, you become bold. You turn from fear and whatever and you become a different person. This is what had happened to Peter. And he faced the crowd. And he's talking to them. Now, we went over, or we skipped over all the, the details about the prophets, about the Holy Spirit, and, and all that. And we come to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Peter says, David, in Psalm 16, when he was speaking, Psalm 16, David spoke as a prophet. I remember in the book of Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch who was in the chariot reading the book of Isaiah 
and he was reading Isaiah chapter 53. And Philip caught up with him by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And he asked Philip to go up to the chariot to sit with him. When Philip sat down there, this man asked him, is this man talking about, this prophet, is he talking about himself or about another man? And in verse 32 of Acts 8, it says, Philip opened his mouth, and from that same verse, Isaiah 53, he preached to him Christ. David, in Psalm 16, he's talking about Christ. And he was not talking about himself. To prove this, Peter tells them, David is dead and buried, and his tomb is with us. Now this goes directly against those who oppose the resurrection and who say Jesus did not rise from the dead. Remember again, it is only 50 days after the Passover, after the resurrection. And Peter confronts the Jews and he said, he says, this Jesus whom you killed, God has raised him up. Now, and Peter says, David is dead, buried, is too, is with us. <laughs> Wait a minute. If the Jews knew that Jesus has not risen from the dead. They knew where his tomb was. Why did they not seek to confront the disciples and correct this error? And today, somebody from somewhere, whichever university you have gone to, my brother, my friend, I better believe Peter who was with Jesus than believe in your PhDs, wherever you got them from. Because Peter was there. The Jews were there in Jerusalem. And they are told, this man whom you crucified, they, Peter accused them directly. But they had nothing to say because they, they themselves also knew it is true. Jesus has risen from the dead. And you come today, 2,000 years later, and you want to tell me you know him better than those who were there? No. I must be a fool to believe you. But I am not. I may not be as educated as you are, but I am not that foolish to believe you. I will believe Peter. And I will believe the reaction of the Jews because they had nothing to say to Peter when he proclaimed the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But let's go back to our text. Peter says, this Jesus, not that Jesus, this Jesus, who is present because he had promised, look, I am with you always. Peter knew now, after the Holy Spirit had come, Jesus is with them. So he said, this is Jesus, God has raised you from the dead. And what, what is he saying? He's saying, being exalted to heaven, when he went back to heaven, he has received from the Father this promise of the Holy Spirit. And he has poured it out upon us. What you both see and you hear. In other words, there was undemonstrable evidence that the Holy Spirit has come. 
my brothers and my sisters, let's go back to wherever we might have left the way. Jeremiah tells, tells the children of Judah, ask your elders, where is the old pathway? And they will tell you, there is an old pathway, the Pentecostal pathway, in which we can walk in the spirit and in the power of God and proclaim the power of God. But we got to go back. Forget about material blessings. Forget about names you are making for yourselves and, and becoming famous and whatever, whatever you are doing. Go back. Let's go back and ask the elders. And if there are no elders who can remember, consult the scripture in the book of Acts. It will tell you this Jesus. Look again verse 2 as we conclude. This Jesus, God, has raised up of which we are all witnesses. Peter is talking about the apostles and the rest of the disciples. 120. Then he tells you, Therefore, being exhorted, to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, He poured out this which you now see and hear. Next lesson, we are talking about it, that right hand of God, where Jesus is now. So, May God bless you as we go back to those old pathways, the ways of Pentecost, the ways of power, the ways of miracles, the ways of encouragement, the ways of abnormal, you know, divine ability to do the work of God and to live our lives, the ways of control where we have the power of God. May God bless you. Let us pray. Thank you, Father. Once again, we thank you for speaking to us through your word. May your word become a life in our hearts and in our lives and guide us in your stretch pathways. Today, we repent. We come back to the right path. Fill us with the Holy Spirit of God and guide us in the ways of righteousness. And all the glory and the honor and the power and the worship will come back to you. In Jesus' name, amen.